it's good to see that the city boys are very active in this summer's secondary transfer window. And it looks as if the main message or our, our outcry for major cities, major MLS cities to be more active in the transfer window, it looks like they are finally responding to us. They're, they, they've been hearing our cries. They've been hearing our pleas. And this is one thing I do like about Major League Soccer compared to other professional soccer leagues throughout the world. It seems as if Major League Soccer, they, they respond to the fans at a, a quicker pace more than any other league throughout the world. So with that being said, whether you're a YouTuber, whether you're a blogger, whether you are a, a Twitter worker, Instagram worker, TikTok worker, whatever you are doing to help promote Major League Soccer in particular, continue to do what you're doing. Because whether you believe this or not, the league is watching. The league is paying attention. Now, will you get your credit? Nope. However, that's part of the sacrifice. Because remember what I said in book one. We need people, including myself, that are willing to volunteer to help promote the game of soccer in general. But when it comes to the national team, they they got good good support good support. They got decent support from mainstream media and other people already. So they I mean, the impact from independent media workers it is not as impactful as those who are helping to promote Major League Soccer. And with that being said, moving forward, it looks like my focus is going to be Major League Soccer for the time being. I started off um, trying to just trying to focus on soccer as a whole back in early 2022. But as time has progressed, I realized that you can't just put soccer, American soccer, you can't just put it in one box. You got the men's national team. You got the women's national team. And you got MLS. You have USL. You have NWSL. You have USLW. And you also have the amateurs. You have, there's still high school. There's still college. You, know, you also got other leagues like MLS Next Pro. You got NISA. You got NPSL. So, soccer is, it's like a, in, in music terms, it's like a genre. And that has, it's, it's a genre that consists of sub-genres within itself. That's what I've come to realize. Like, this is not some sport where, where you just, you're forced to just focus on one thing. This sport is diverse. And this, the sports, the sport in general is, it's a huge economy. It's a huge economy within itself. And if we had more investors that realized that, Man, this sport will be bigger than what it is right now. And I'm not only talking about MLS, I'm talking about the national team, NWSL, all the leagues will be bigger than what it is right now. If we have more investors that realize that. 
But one thing that's pushing them away is the high cost. And that's something I'm not getting into within this monologue. The city boys. New York City is active. LAFC is active. We all know Miami is active and Miami ain't done yet. And I just want to say, even if they're able to get Luis Suarez during this current transfer window, don't think that Miami is done. They're still going to be active in the winter window because you need young enforcements. You know, Messi, Suarez, Busquets, Alba, Martinez, Joseph Martinez. They're older. So you're going to need some younger and energetic guys as reinforcements. You need, you're going to need a solid bit, a solid bench, solid backups. You need debt. That's something that Austin FC doesn't have. It's, it's the reason why Austin FC, they've been struggling in, in CCL, struggling in League's Cup. If Austin had debt, Austin will be top three team in the league right now. So that is something that Miami's really going to have to focus on in the next transfer window, which will be in the winter. So don't think Miami is done. The same for LA Galaxy. LA Galaxy is going to be more active in the winter window. This current roster that we see right now, I guarantee you that this roster is going to look completely different next winter. Opening week 2024, the current LA Galaxy team that you see right now, it's going to be it's going to be completely different. It is going to be completely different. So, Galaxy fans, you're going to have to continue to endure a little more pain this summer for the rest of the season. But I guarantee you, this winter, LA Galaxy is not going to let you down. They are going to be very active because this current roster is unacceptable. I know they're trying, but Ellie Galaxy has to set us. Ellie Galaxy has to remind the the nation who they are, and this current roster is not going to be able to do it consistently. As for the New York Red Bulls, I have no clue. What's what 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 the vision of the New York Red Bulls? What's their vision? I have no clue. Their plans? I have no clue. One thing I would like to see, and I hope it happens during the winter transfer window, is new ownership. That's the only thing that's holding the Red Bulls back. This current ownership group. They treat the New York Red Bulls as a European developmental league. The New York Red Bulls deserves better. It's a shame that Philadelphia Union, New York City FC, Cincinnati have all surpassed them. It's a damn shame. Now, as for Chicago, I know Chicago hasn't been too active. However, I don't have a problem with that. Because from the outside looking in, this Chicago Fire team looks like they can make a surprising run in the playoffs. I don't know what they're going to do in Leagues Cup. Leagues Cup is pretty much a toss up, even though my preseason pick to win the Leagues Cup was Columbus. But Minnesota also looks good. So I don't know. I don't know. What they're going to what, what Chicago's going to do in this Leagues Cup. But one thing I do believe. That this current roster right here. 
they can make a surprising playoff run. And the reason behind that, it looks like they have guys that want to be there. And this is something that I couldn't say in 2022. And it's something that I, I couldn't say in 2021. You know, you you once had Gaga Slolina. He was getting ready to leave to Chelsea. John Duran. He made it known clear that he wanted to go after the 2022 season. But this season, we're not hearing about guys that's wanting to leave. We're not hearing about guys that already have plans on leaving. We're not hearing that out of Chicago, which is a good thing because during this Leafs Cup break, Chicago Fire is right there. They're right there to make the playoffs. So I can honestly say this roster right here, ever since I've been watching MLS in 2021, this current Chicago Fire roster has been my favorite roster so far since 2021. So as long as everybody stay healthy, as long as the current guys stay healthy, I think the Chicago Fire will be fine. But speaking of an organization or a group that is not so fine, is ESPN. Now, ESPN is a network that I have been talking a lot about through book one and book two. The reason why I like talking a lot about ESPN because I grew up during a time where ESPN was a phenomenal sports network. I grew up during a time where when it came when it came to sports broadcasting ESPN was untouchable. Last week reports came out that ESPN is considering that NFL, NBA, and MLB purchase a stake of the network which means NFL, NBA, and MLB will be owners of ESPN. And if that happens, that network is will be solely for those leagues. No other sports will be broadcasted. But NFL, NBA, and MLB. And if that happens, ESPN will be officially dead in my book because you can't call yourself every sports network when you're owned by three sports because those three sports they are going to muscle their power and take advantage of the leverage they have for you to force you to promote their leagues so in the fall it's going to be they're just going to be promoting NFL nothing but NFL in the fall in the winter, it's going to be nothing but NBA. And then in the summertime, it's going to be nothing but MLB. So with that being said, I once had hope that MLS and ESPN can rekindle their relationship. But moving forward, it looks like that's not going to happen. It looks like ESPN is ready to sell itself to NFL, NBA, and MLB. And quite honestly, they... They kind of indirectly already done that already. You watch a typical, you watch ESPN on a typical day, you're just getting nothing but NFL, NBA news. It's already going on right now. So the them selling themselves to those leagues, it'll just make it official. It's already unofficial right now. So from this monologue forward, Unless something drastically changes, which I believe it won't, you will no longer hear me encourage MLS to 
restored their relationship with ESPN. Those days are over for the time being. Now, speaking of relationships, let's get into the main message. DC United, Taxi Fontas. You know, this is something that I really didn't want to talk about. And, you know, when it comes to situations like Taxi Fontas and Roberta, the player that he, he fought, I think it's wise for us to not rush to judgment, gather details, get a better understanding of what happened. You know, one thing I can say, Taxi Fontas, you chose the right sport to play. Because if you were an NBA player, you'll be out of a job right now because the NBA will be forced to make a rushed judgment. NBA is the type of league that bows down to big media when it comes to social, social pop culture. NBA is that league that tends to quickly bow down to pop culture and to people who don't watch sports. They just see a headline where somebody said the N word, then they get outraged. They don't really care about the sport. They just want to be outraged for no reason. Whether NBA keeps a racist guy or don't keep a racist guy, they're still not going to watch it regardless. But that's just how the NBA operates. NFL to a certain degree, too. All I'm saying, Taxi Fonts, is, is good that you're, you're playing it for the right league that has patience and that doesn't tend to bow down to public pressure, largely because they don't have a close relationship with big media like that. So there's pros and cons to the, the strained relationship between MLS and big media. Well, my first question is, what were you? Y'all arguing over. What was Taxi and the player Roberta? What were they arguing about? I'm sure you guys weren't arguing about who has the most girlfriends because MLS players are more mature than NBA players. I'm sure you weren't arguing about who has the better looking cars because MLS players are not auditioning for NASCAR, like the Georgia Bulldogs football team. So what were you two guys arguing about? The only thing I can think about is tactics. And let me say this about tactics. The teams, the MLS teams that focus too much on tactics, that stress themselves over tactics are going to be the teams that finish at the bottom and most likely miss the playoffs. The teams that are not so hell bent on tactics. Those are going to be the more successful teams, the teams whose players and their skills gel with one another. I give you an example, Minnesota. Emmanuel Reynosos and Timu Puki. Timu Puki only been around with Minnesota, what, one or two weeks? Minnesota is playing well. Why is Emmanuel Reynosos and Timu Puki playing so well when they, they haven't even been around each other for so long? They're not so stressed on tactics. Both players are feeding off each other's skill and talented players find ways to make it work on the field. That's why Minnesota United looks like a huge contender to win the League's Cup. And I hope they make it far. Because 
I like what I see out of Minnesota. They look fun to watch and they look unstoppable. Minnesota have a three headed monster. They have Emmanuel Reynosos. They have Timu Puki. And they have the South African striker. I can't pronounce his name right, so I apologize in advance if I say it wrong, but Hong Wang. Hong Wang, the South African striker. Minnesota has a three headed monster. That is something we can't say about DC United. DC United, what kind of team are you, Wayne Rooney? And this really comes to coaching now. When it comes to Taxi Fontes saying the N word, this, this is all I'll say. MLS, MLS has to make a decision. This is the second time doing this. MLS is not a little boy anymore. MLS is a 30 team league. MLS is a grown man now. I don't have to tell MLS what to do. We don't have to tell MLS what to do. MLS knows what they need to do. And they're going to make that decision. That's all I have to say. Because me, I, look, I'm not one of those guys that, 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 that's getting into sports commentary to talk about social issues, social pop culture issues. I'm more interested into the entertainment. So when it comes to Taxi Fonte, Fonte saying that word, it, it's up to MLS. They have to make a decision and they're going to make a decision. I don't know what it's going to be. It's whatever. But when it comes to you, DC United, what kind of team are you? You have a mixture of old guys and you got some young guys, but it seemed like the old and the young are not gelling together. I'm not even sure if the players are gelling with you, Wayne Rooney. It, it kind of reminds me of New York City Football Club. The players and the coach, we all know they don't get along, man. A coach who always looks frustrated at the end of every game. You tell me if he's truly getting along with his players. You know why the coaches and the players are not getting along? Because they're stressing themselves over too much on tactics. They're not playing like Minnesota United. Look at Miami. You think Miami was focused on tactics in Leo Messi's debut on July 21st? You think Miami was focused on tactics? No. Skillful players find a way to work it out on the field. LAFC, another team. If LAFC didn't overstress itself about tactics, they would have not gone on this illusion streak. Some people don't like the fact that uh, head coach Steve Strandolo, some people say that he looks too relaxed on the sideline. There's nothing wrong with that. Because when you have talented players, talented players know how to work it out on the field. Skillful players, they know how to work it out on the field. They can make it happen. Soccer doesn't have to be this stressful sport where you have to overthink and constantly concern yourself about tactics. I strongly believe that if DC United didn't stress itself over too much about tactics, they'll be playing much better. And the group of guys who tend to overstress themselves, who, who tend to focus too much on tactics, is usually the European players that migrate to MLS. They tend to be the ones that try to put so much emphasis on tactics, where you got guys in, on this side of the country, North America and South America, eh, tactics is not really a big deal. Soccer players on this side of the country, they more so focus on their skill and their skill on the field tends to work out for itself. So maybe it's a culture clash going on in DC United. Whatever the, the cost is, whatever the issue is, Wayne Rooney, you got to figure it out. But another thing we have to also have to figure out, Wayne Rooney, are you going to be around for the short term or the long term? Because Wayne Rooney, if you're not going to be around for the long term, we, we need to find your replacement. Because DC United is not some transit club. 
DC United is not a transfer club where you just come temporarily, you know, prepare yourself to coach for some big European club and then you leave. DC United is not that type of club. DC United is one of the most prestigious clubs in American soccer history. So if you, Ray Rooney, if you're treating DC United like a transit club, we need to get you out of here by the end of the season. If you are not dedicated for the long term, you got to go at the end of this season. And we need to find a coach who will be dedicated into returning DC United back to glory. Because it's an embarrassment to see DC United struggling to make the playoffs. It's an embarrassment to see DC United at the bottom every year. It is an embarrassment for American soccer. It is an embarrassment. And I'll close on this. Europeans that desire to play in Major League Soccer. Look, the game is different over here. We new generation sports fans, we don't care about tactics. The reason why we don't care about tactics is because we have, a lot of us have short term memory. Short term memory as in, well, not short term memory. We, we don't have patience. We, we're very impatient. When it comes to entertainment, as soon as we start watching the game, we want to be entertained immediately. We don't want to wait for a, a full 30 minutes for your formations to finally develop and for you to finally get an idea of what the opponent is doing so you can adjust in to your certain formations in order for you to start playing ball. No, we want to see you get active as soon as we start watching the game. If not, we'll find some other form of entertainment on our cell phones, video games, laptop, um, or iPad, tablets. We have different avenues. We have different, we have multiple options of entertainment. So when it comes to sports, we're not thinking about tactics. We don't want to be educated about the game of soccer. We want to enjoy watching it. So you Europeans, when you migrate over here, leave your tactics mentality in Europe because it's really not a big deal over here. And I think that's one of the reasons why Toronto has been struggling. You have the two Italians and Bernadici, he, he said it himself. He criticized Bob Bradley, who I believe got scapegoated, by the way, because that's what it's looking like right now. Bob Bradley, it looked like Bob Bradley was the scapegoat. But he criticized Bob Bradley for not having too much tactics. Bob Bradley is gone. The team is still playing bad. So that goes to show you that Bob Bradley wasn't the sole problem. Tactics is not a big deal over here. It will really help. We can avoid culture clashes. If European players, you leave your tactic mentality in Europe. Now, when you return back to Europe, then yes, tactics, you can revive your tactic spirit again. But in North America, that's not really a big deal over here. We mainly want to be entertained. And the players understand that. And that's why a lot of American and Mexican players are not too focused on tactics. So. I pointed out two possible reasons what might have led to the Taxi Fontes Roberta dispute. Am arguing over tactics or just a plain culture clash? Listen, I'll close out on this. DC United get it together. More people are watching MLS more than ever. And a lot of us, we don't remember how well you played in the 90s. We don't remember how well you played in the early 2000s. A lot of us don't even know, and a lot of us don't even care. We're looking at what are you doing now? And as of right now, DC United, nobody views you as a prestigious historical team. It is your job in the 2020s, similar to LA Galaxy, to remind us 
who you are. And you got to move fast, DC United. Because Miami, Miami is here. New York City is on the verge of reviving itself. Philadelphia, whenever Philadelphia learns to start winning championships, they will be an unstoppable force. Whenever Philadelphia decides to start spending more money, that's probably why they're not getting over the hump because they want to be cheap. I'm not saying that Philadelphia should, should just overspend like Atlanta United, but don't be cheap. So whenever Philadelphia stops being cheap and they start winning championships, <laughs> they'll be an unstoppable force. Columbus is reviving itself. Cincinnati is very ambitious. Nashville is ambitious. Orlando is ambitious. When it comes to Atlanta, when Atlanta spends the right money on when Atlanta spends money on the right players instead of just lavishly spending money on just some random high rated South American player, they will be an unstoppable force. You have the cars are against you. The cars are stacked against you. Once Chicago and New York City finally get their pro soccer stadium, I mean. The competition is not going to get easier, DC United. That's why it's very important for you to figure out what Rain Rooney, what is his purpose in Major League Soccer? What is his plans? If it's a short term plan, he has to go at the end of this season because DC United is not a transit club. DC United is a destination club. It is the nation's capital. And if he's here, but if he's here for the long term now, we got a lot of work to do. And the first thing he's going to have to do if he's here for the long term. Finding players that not only want to play in Major League Soccer, but players who are willing to put their personal ideologies and mentalities aside for the betterment of DC United.